Hello friends, welcome back to Indo Tales from Life and kindly excuse me for not posting a video for almost a month now and thanks for people who kept asking me to post videos. So in this video we are going to talk about a very interesting, challenging and a case that was a mystery. So let me tell you how I solved it. This is the case we are going to discuss today. We have a right maxillary lateral incisor with the calcified root canal anatomy and we also see a radio opacity in the periapical region which makes this case a mystery. This is how the patient reported to our clinic. This patient was referred by another dentist for management of 1-2 and I could see a discolored lateral incisor associated with clinical swelling and a sinus tract. And the patient gives a history of orthodontic treatment which could be the reason for the calcification of the root canal anatomy. And what we see in the periapical region, the radio opacity, could be an odontome which could be infected also. So the challenge here is to identify the origin of infection. Is it the calcified canal that has turned necrotic and has a periapical lesion or is it an infected odontome that is the reason for the swelling and sinus tract. Before we discuss more about this case, let me brief you about what is calcific metamorphosis. So calcific metamorphosis is a condition in where the entire root canal anatomy completely gets sclerosed following trauma or severe orthodontic forces. So most of the time following calcific metamorphosis, the tooth remains healthy. The root canal anatomy gets completely sclerosed but in spite of this, the apical one-third retains healthy pulp tissue and hence these teeth are asymptomatic, their periapical lamina dura is intact and these teeth do not require any intervention. But sometimes these calcific metamorphoses, in spite of the attempt from the human body to sclerose the root canal anatomy and prevent it from getting necros, sometimes it undergoes necrosis and causes periapical lesion. So this is a nice case to discuss because we had both situation in the same patient uh, in two adjacent teeth. Yes, this patient also had a trauma and she reported with two calcified teeth and this patient had symptoms only in the maxillary central incisor whereas the maxillary lateral incisor was uh, clinically asymptomatic and when I took a radiograph I could clearly see that there is a lesion associated with maxillary central incisor whereas the periapical region of the lateral incisor was healthy with an intact lamina dura. So as I mentioned earlier if there is a lesion there has to be a canal. So I don't take CBCT here. I will know that there is a canal which I need to carefully trace but the canal originates only almost from the middle third. So in these cases we need to use magnification we need to slowly drill till we reach the patent canal but the canal is always there. Whereas in the lateral incisor, if I try to find a canal, even with magnification or even with CBCT guidance, we are not going to find any canals at all. So I only initiated treatment in the central incisor, completed the treatment, and this is the five month follow up. We can see the lesion starting to reduce in the maxillary central incisor. And this is the one year follow up where we can see a completely healed periapical region. And we can also see that the maxillary lateral incisor continues to remain healthy. So again, this case is a very nice ex explanation for you to understand how we go about in treating these calcified cases. So now coming back to our case of discussion, we have this lateral incisor and there is a lesion. But the confusion here is whether the lesion is originating from the tooth or is it from the odontome. So that is why I prefer to go for a CBCT in this case, whereas I am not recommending CBCT for all these calcified cases. So this is the CBCT sagittal section. You can see that there is a, a periapical lesion which is perforating the labial cortical bone. And we also see that there is a patent canal where we can see the pulp chamber has a little calcification almost near the cervical area but after that there is a faint canal which could be traced. 
and this is the axial section and we can see that the lateral incisor is the one which has infection and the odontome is just lying passively there it's not infected and it's not in any nearby vicinity to the periapical region of the lateral incisor so it was only the two dimensional image of the conventional x-rays which actually overlap both this odontome and the periapical lesion associated with the lateral incisor so let me tell you how to predict or read cbct so though you might be getting reports from the cbct center i really recommend you to run the cbct yourself when you get the cd and especially the axial sagittal and the coronal sections are going to be very helpful depending on the situation but in this particular case we are using axial sections and the sagittal section to interpret what we really want so this is how i run the cbct that i received from the lab this is the axial sections i'm going from the coronal or the incisal edge to the apical third and as i go you can see uh, the adjacent teeth you have a very nice uh, big patent canal in both uh, the canine and the central incisor but in the lateral incisor we cannot see a clear canal but still i can see a faint canal and as i move more apically i can see the complex compound odontome which is completely on the palatal side there is enough and more of bone distance between these two and the odontome is not the cause for the infection here and this is the sagittal section again i'm going to run it as a video so i'm moving from the distal towards the mesial that is i'm moving from almost the canine to the central incisor and i can see that the odontome is only present in between the lateral and the central and more palatally so with these two sections we have interpreted what we wanted what we wanted to confirm so this lesion is not associated with the odontome at all so removal of this odontome is unnecessary and we are going to treat only the lesion that is present in relation to the lateral incisor so now we are going to start endodontic treatment in 1 2 so pre operatively we need to know in what direction and till what depth i need to penetrate with my drills for me to reach the patent canal so we start with the conventional axis and here magnification plays a very important role and the color change is also very crit critical and we also need to search for purchase points so after my traditional axis i am trying to locate uh, for a catchy point with the help of a dg16 and in these cases you need to be very careful because i need to drill little deeper after the conventional axis for me to reach till the cervical or the middle third of the root so i need to confirm before drilling whether i am traveling in the right direction so here i am keeping my dg16 at the purchase point that i have achieved and taking a radiograph so you can see here my dg16 is here whereas the canal path is here so i stop at the right point and change direction immediately because if you don't keep taking radiographs after drilling you may end up perforating so after almost one or every 2 mm that you drill you need to take a radiograph till you reach the patent canal and another uh, easy tip here is you can draw a line because after isolation even if you do a multiple tooth isolation you may not be very sure of the direction or the orientation of your drill so you can draw a line from the gingival zenith to the center point of the incisal edge which will tell you the orientation or the long axis of the tooth so this is going to help me uh, or guide the direction of my drill so we need long neck burrs long neck round burrs in slow speed so uh, these burrs are very useful these are used in contra angle so you can see here i need to move move more distally from the purchase point that which i already achieved so i'm going to do it very slowly and just after drilling one or two millimeters 
again check with me DG16 if you have reached the point where the canal is patent and the line that you have drawn on the label surface is going to be very useful here again and once I get a purchase point then we use a hand K file to negotiate the canal and here again my choice or these orange files you can use C plus files which are uh, carbon steel files basically or you can this particular orange file is from a Neo Endo it's called the Neo Pro uh, I prefer this because it's a size tip size 12.5 it's between 10 and 15 so it has a right balance between flexibility and stiffness to negotiate these canals so I use a gentle watch winding motion patiently till I reach the apex and generally once you locate the patent canal then negotiating these canals are not going to be a problem because these calcified canals are more calcified in the pulp chamber and the coronal third of the root canal whereas the middle and apical third is generally patent especially in these necrotic cases and then determine your working length and start instrumenting with rotary we need to uh, stick to minimal preparation here as we don't need aggressive enlargement so we start with S1 rotary do a lot of irrigation here I'm doing continuous ultrasonic irrigation with diluted sodium hypochlorite. Spend a lot of time in irrigation, then we finish off with F1 here. You can see the direction of the file which is exactly in the direction that we have drawn on the label side so this line that we have drawn is going to be very helpful in these cases and again a lot of irrigant with activation this is where cleaning is achieved since it's an infected canal and this is my master cone radiograph and since I was able to achieve a dry canal in the first visit in spite of this tooth being necrotic and we also have a sinus tract this is an ideal indication for a single visit endo and uh, as usual I followed the bioceramic obturation technique so we injected the sealer placed a single master cone shared it and also sealed the orifices with composite resin and this is the completed endodontic treatment so this is how we started preoperatively we were not able to identify the origin of the infection but once the CBCT was mainly to help me to identify the problem or the origin of infection we clearly knew that the lateral incisor is the cause for the lesion and it's not the odontome has got nothing to do with this so we are not going to do anything with the odontome all we do is a simple endodontic treatment and even without CBCT, I repeat, if there is a lesion, we know that there is a canal, so the management would have been the same. So the take home message is that when there is calcific metamorphosis, don't jump into endodontic treatment immediately because most of the time these teeth do not require any treatment. And one, treat these cases only when they have a lesion. If there is a lesion, there is a canal. Thanks for watching friends and uh, uh, we are coming up with more such videos. Some of you have asked me some topics specifically. We will be doing it all that one by one. So see you soon.